Hi, Bill O'Keefe here. Uh, welcome to the Church Clara Herd in Clara, County Kilkenny. And we're doing another video for the Irish Pure Freesian Club for 2021. Um, this is a family farm. My farm here with my wife Olivia and my parents Philip and Margaret, my uncle Matt. And uh, it's, it's a family farm that's been passed down through the generations. Hopefully it'll be here for another while yet. We're here uh, since the early 1600s, so we're here over 400 years at this stage. Uh, we've been supplying milk on this farm to Kilkenny Creamery originally that became Plan B.A. since uh, 1916 so there's a strong history of milk production on the farm since that time and um, I suppose we're a pedigree British region herd and we're a pedigree herd for the last uh, 20 years registering a number of bulls each year for sale. It's a spring calving system um, very much following I suppose the North Park blueprint a compact early spring calving getting out to grass and um, keeping cows maybe fed reasonably well across the grazing season and trying to get uh, over 500 kilos of milk solids per cow. Okay, so we're here in front of the freshly calf group. They're in eating a bit of maize silage and grass silage. You'd obviously like to have them out grazing and not always possible at this time of the year. So it looks like we're off grass for a couple of days at the moment. Uh, we've had uh, about 15 mils of rain overnight. So that'll take a couple of days to soak off again. We're calving about 15 cows a day at the moment. So we've a busy six, six to eight weeks ahead of us and uh, hopefully we'll go over the bulk of the spring work at that stage and things will start to get a bit easier from then on. So uh, we decided to use British Friesian on the farm, um, I suppose mainly for fertility and, um, and health reasons. I came home to farm in uh, 1998, so after spending a bit of time in New Zealand I'd seen crossbreds out there and they were fine cows but we weren't really going to go down that route here. And I suppose one of the main um, things is that they, they last for plenty of lactation. We have cows there 10, 11, 12 lactation, so when you have mature cows coming in doing 40 litres, uh, they start clocking up a lot of kilos of milk solids over the course of the year. The calving there in February, most of them, uh, they have a long lactation, uh, a lot of days of grass, and uh, hopefully a lot of cheap kilos of milk solids. So we'd be, we'd be doing over 500 kilos of milk solids in the, in the co-op uh, for the last number of years. And, um, We've brought in a lot of heifers, maybe this year, and, and we might struggle to quite hit that, but we're very confident that with a mature herd, we can do up to 550 kilos of milk solids per cow. And we'll look through a, a cow maybe later on in, in the calving box, one that's about to calve, and we can just look through the finer points of what we see with the modern British region cow. We try to work very hard on the conformation of the cows in the herd, um, and we're, I suppose by that we just mean we like to have very good quality others, good legs and feet, and a good uh, framey cow with good capacity to convert grass into milk and obviously a good wide rump and a, a, a level top line. So I suppose this cow is a good example of the breed. She classified 82 points last year as a heifer. I suppose I like to say a good rectangular shape between the, between the front legs and the back legs. Just a nice level top line and, um, and, and a good square cow behind. She's, um, she's done 460 kilos of milk solids as a heifer, 448 fat and 362 protein, about 5,500 litres of milk. So a very good um, and highly productive cow. And it's it's just, I suppose, when we're, we breed a lot of bulls for farmers, and when you sell a bull to a farmer, you like to be sure that he's going to leave good udders after him, uh, leave good legs and feet in the herd. And I suppose we're very selective about which bull calves we keep to sell on to other farmers. We have a lot of repeat business over the years, a lot of people that keep coming back to us uh, for bulls, one or two bulls over a number of years. So we started uh, using the British Friesian bulls maybe 20 years ago again. Uh, I left um, school in 96, went to Ag College for a couple of years and went to New Zealand for, for nine months and uh, saw plenty of nice crossbred cows out there. Um, but we weren't what we wanted to milk here. We did try a couple of them at times and just felt that um, they weren't fitting in what we wanted to do in the herd. Um, so we would have been using a lot of high RBI, high milk bulls at the time. We would have been using the likes of um, Ned Boy, Sonny Boy, Lindy Alfred, Malloy, those sort of bulls going back along. And um, I suppose the first cross was okay. They were still um, strong enough, enough fertility. That's when we went into the second and, and third crosses afterwards. So we started running into a lot of um, fertility problems with those cows. Um, high empty rates, 15, 20% empty. 15-16 uh, week breeding season, cows calving out to June and running cows from one year to the next. 
so just plenty of trouble. I would have had friends maybe at the time that were milking pure Frisian herds, so I'd had a beef enterprise on the farm, stayed Frisian, and mightn't have been getting the same production, but uh, a lot less problems and a lot less trouble getting cows and calf every year. So we went back and we had a serious look at that, and there's still some old Frisian families on the farm here, and, and uh, my grandparents heard Farrakho herd on the Gorge Bridge, they would have had some nice cow families, and some older cows and little finished came up from that herd of some embryo work and, and bread stock was off and how we could and uh, some of those bulls were very successful and left exceptional daughters in the herd. We're still using some of those bulls um, to today, maybe bulls that were born 15 years ago. So we've gone in and tried to pick up older Frisian genetics where we could. Um, the likes of Horn and Pegasus, Grove Breadwinner bloodlines, come back using bulls from the likes of the Kathleen herd, Lake Mead herd, Black Isle herd and um, Castledale and Nearwater in more recent times and trying to blend those bloodlines in across the cow families that we had here and pick up any older families that we could along the way and I suppose we've, we've added to the herd over the years. We've um, bought in sales in Black Isle, uh, Culverness, Langley in recent times and um, a few females added as well from the Castledale herd in Northern Ireland and then some of our own genetics and I suppose we're trying to breed um, as productive a cow as possible, like a nice tight cow, so we'd have, have to her to be classified um, BG or excellent at this stage. Uh, very good others and likes of feet and herd in general and trying to weed out the problem ones. And um, so skills and solids then is the next thing and I suppose we're working on that all the time and it would, would be milk partner on 550, 560 kilos of solids, delivering just over 500 kilos of solids to the crop most of the time and um, trying to improve on that every year. So I suppose we have cows doing up as high as six, seven, eight hundred kilos of solids and we're trying to keep sons from those cows at the moment to add to the breeding program and uh, to bring the thing forward in the future. EBI is always a struggle but um, we'll work on that as much as we can over the next few years and we might introduce some other genetics, we'll see how we go. So I suppose the way we look at it is if a cow calves in in um, February and she's clocking 40 litres there and she keeps doing that for as long as possible through the spring, she'll uh, leave a lot of kilos of milk solids after at the end of the year and that's why fertility we see has been the key to production on the farm and uh, a high six week calving rate, a uh, high submission rate, high conception rate are all helps for that and um, helps just helps the cows just to leave a lot of solids across a, a, a good long lactation. I suppose the other thing is then we'd have a lot of cows when we finish building numbers, um, we have cows getting to 10, 11, 12 lactation with a cow classified excellent 92 this year on the 12th lactation. She's still fresh as a daisy and gone back in calf, so we'll, um, we'll see how she lasts over time. But when you have cows getting to that and doing mature yields for a long number of years, um, that just makes the production very easy on the farm. So trying to get to a mature herd, uh, fertile, trouble-free herd, and trying to improve the freezing breed all the time, that's what we're about. And, uh, as we get back into older bulls when we have to and use uh, whatever is new and, and modern coming on the scene as well at times to try and improve the breed and improve the herd as best we can going forward. So I suppose our, our milk records uh, most recently would be uh, 7,332 kilos of milk, 4.07 butterfat and 3.69 protein. Our butterfat is probably a little bit low, we were recording through jars at the time and we've changed across the milk meters now. That's 569 kilos of solids from the herd with a 364 day calving interval and 88% calved in six weeks. I suppose our um, EBI would say that we're um, minus um, 171 kilos of milk, minus 2.4 kilos of fat and minus 4 kilos of protein and minus 13 on our milk sub index. So it's all a little bit hard to understand the time. So we're plus 80 on fertility but um, we'd see bulls at plus two and three hundred on fertility and uh, not doing the same figures as what the cows in the herd are doing. We've a um, 450 acre grazing platform here now in Clara, which is which is brilliant, but I suppose it's a long, narrow farm that creates its own challenges. So it's um, it's one and a half kilometers from the milking parlor to the far end on one side and it's two and a half kilometers to the far end on the other side. So there's a lot of walking involved in that. and. Um, so this year we would have uh, increased the uh, silage pits on the farm. We would have gone from um, 1,200 tonnes of storage to uh, 2,500 tonnes of silage storage. We have good um, slurry storage on the farm already with a million gallon slurry tank on the farm. And I suppose in the, just in last summer we um, doubled up the milk and parlour from a 20 unit herring bone to a 21 double up uh, herring bone with um, cluster removers new milk meters 
and feed to yield system got into the parlour as well. So um, we were looking at a rotary parlour, we felt the investment was too much and the way that the farm is laid out, it's a very long walk at times. Uh, we feel the farm might lend itself to have a uh, second milking parlour at the farm, the farm at some stage if uh, numbers increase any further. So we're milking 450 cows this year and um, at the stocking rate of around three cows to the hectare on the hardcore grazing block and we use some of the farm fields further away for heifer air and for young stock. We've uh, expanded our farm through leasing in blocks of ground from uh, some of our neighbours and in a lot of cases it's leasing in a portion of a farm or a few fields and a lot of those farm, farmers are still farming actively in their own right at the same time and we do business with those as well, some of them take cull cows from us to fatten, they take uh, wolf calves from us and beef calves from us and I suppose it's a nice relationship to have with your neighbours uh, we might buy straw or a bale of silage from some of them as well and uh, indeed some of them are even, even working with us on the farm. So that's, it's just a, a good working relationship that we have and it's uh, I suppose a positive story to tell that these expansion of cows and bigger herds they can often give a good bit of income to uh, a parish, to a neighbourhood and uh, I suppose put money in a few people's pockets and not just one person. I suppose this is the farm office and I suppose this is probably the most important part of the farm uh, nowadays. We've the, Delpro system here, it's telling us uh, how much milk was produced yesterday. We're still in the early part of lactation, so 22.7 kilos, and uh, how much concentrate was consumed yesterday. That total was consumed 5.98, so 6 kilos of cow is what we're feeding uh, for the moment through the spring. And I suppose all the graphs are going the right direction, the milk yield is in. So, um, so the other program we use a lot is the Irish Farm Computer System and uh, the recent events we're putting in calvings and that, and that uploads everything to ICBF as well. And um, we've also installed um, the cow manager tags in the cows this, this winter. So for example, that's telling us which cows are ruminating, how much they're eating, are they lying down. It's, it's the full um, fertility, health and nutrition package. I suppose the fertility, it's gonna pick out the cows on heat and give us the optimum time for AI and allow us to use the drafting system to pull them out and then on the health side of things it's watching cows if they're lying down too much not eating enough and it takes temperature to the cow regularly as well to see um, to see if the cows are okay and it'll alert and even the other day it alerted the cow that was just laying a bit off colour and just needed to be maybe moved into the calving box a bit early and given a bit of TLC. The nutrition tells us if a cow is ruminating or eating it can tell the difference between chewing the cud and grazing or eating silage and uh, I suppose it's, it's it's gone to the stage now with numbers increasing. You need to be able to keep an eye on cows uh, out the field, and this thing is uh, working out the field. There's solar routers out sending information back constantly from the fields and keeping an eye on the cows 24 hours a day. And um, hasn't picked up too many problems yet, thankfully. The breeding season is the big one, and uh, hopefully it'll flag if there's a few sick cows or cows off colour through the spring. Hopefully we won't have too many problems, but if it does, it'll pick them up. Okay, so we always farm here in Clara with the, with the environment in mind. We try to look after the environment as uh, much as possible. Uh, we've fenced off this water course here. We've all, we have about two and a half kilometers of water course on the farm that we've fenced off uh, to protect the wildlife. And uh, we've also let the hedges grow a little bit more this year. And we're planting a lot more um, native trees on the farm. I suppose it's one thing, it's, it's trying to educate farmers. I suppose we would have planted maybe chestnut and beech trees going back which aren't native. And I suppose we're trying to move over towards oak, white, horn, and um, ash, unfortunately, the tea, which is dieback, we're, we're staying away from. We're planting some willows and some birch trees and some holly on the farm as well this winter. So, all we're trying to do is small bit for the environment to try and improve things, improve biodiversity, and uh, maybe create some small habitats on the farm. We're looking at maybe create some ponds along the stream in the future just to uh, improve things further. Historically we wouldn't have taken out a whole lot of hedgerows out of the farm and we would have a stream running right down through the middle of the whole farm actually at the moment. It's something that we're conscious of protecting and working with and working around. And I'm very happy that we've left all the old hedgerows on the farm and planted some new hedgerows and uh, we'd have planted about 300 trees this winter and it's something that we try to do every winter is add to the habitat, the biodiversity and uh, the native woodland uh, in pockets that we have on the farm. So that's it from uh, Church Clara Herd lads and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you know what we're trying to do here, trying to breed a herd of uh, fertile, healthy, productive British region cows uh, while looking after the environment and doing a bit uh, for more biodiversity and for a carbon footprint as well. Uh, so hopefully we can pass the farm on in a better state than we got it.